Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Mark. Today I'm going to show you how you can build another gadget for the office. This time we're going to do magic. Are you ready? Let's go! We are going to build an ornament to hang on the wall. I own the ornament will put several magic wands. Instead of using wood, I decided to use clay. I'm going to use polymer clay. It's basically artificial clay, it's called Fimo. And I found a few examples um, from people selling an object on eBay that looks kind of what I need, something similar I want to build. So we're going to use this as an example. Well, first thing we're going to use is clay. So I'm going to open up the pack. This is 500 grams, and if it's not enough, I have another pack of 500 grams. So let's see where this is going to take us. Question is, will this be enough? I do think it will be enough. This is the first part. Yeah, well, sometimes the work of an electronic engineer is kind of weird. Just place this back. So what we have now is a scroll and we kind of need to shape it a little more. For that, we're going to use several tools. And yeah, we do have some leftover clay, no problem. Never thought I'd be doing this line of work again of the kindergarten. So what I need to do now is wait. It takes a few days for this clay to dry, and then we will fine tune it, use a little sandpaper, we'll paint it, and we find ways to put in the electronics. Okay, let's finish up the board. Before I put in electronics, First we have to uh, finish it. By now the clay is, has dried and it has some nice cracks in it that were formed while drying, which makes it perfect. It makes it look more old. And that's actually what I like. What I need to, need to do now is paint it. And I need to put in uh, some little screws to hold all the ones, like so. So to do that, I do a few holes. And I have these little hooks that uh, go in there and I'll just screw them in until it's deep enough to hold the walls. The board is made of polymer clay and even when it's dry you can still adjust it. You can drill holes, you can file it down, you can paint it and this version you can even uh, laser engrave it. And that's exactly right to hold the walls. Nice little one board. Now what's left to do before we can put in electronics uh, we need to paint it because I do want to look this like an old Perkament um, scroll. Uh, that means it has to look a bit more like paper. For that I'm going to apply some paint. Some water-based paint that I'm going to apply. And you know, fingers crossed, hope for the best. No idea if the result will resemble paper, but since it's really old, it's supposed to look old, I don't think it's that important. As long as it's brownish. And I do apply the thickness random. I don't want it evenly spread because if you have some spots that are thicker, it makes it look cracked and more old. So it's all part of the plan. Oh yeah, I really like this result. Looks like old leather skin or so from an animal. In the old days, they would use skin to ride on. And basically, it looks just like it when it's done. You know, to give it this extra magic touch. Oh yeah, that's very nice indeed. I'm going to let this dry. When it's dry, I'm going to apply some text on it because I want some nice uh, writing on here because each magic wand has a specific purpose. Okay, so I finish up the board and we have a nice board from clay with some hooks to put in the wands. But to know which one does what, I'm going to apply some text uh, stickers on it. Time, budget, ideas or manpower. Yeah, manpower I think it will do. Now I just need to clean up uh, some of the letters, like the letter O has a little sticker in the middle that I need to remove by hand. But basically, this is it. We're ready to put in electronics. Okay, so basically an Arduino Nano, this is what it looks like. And then you can build it on a breadboard using an SD card module as a reader. And of course, I will draw you off a schematic. So that's one way to do it, just follow the schematic. The thing is, if you do that, you don't have power management and you have to use a 
power switch to turn on and off. The other option is to use the PCB I designed. I made a nice PCB that has advanced uh, power uh, management. Basically, the power management, what it does is there's a regulator to make our 5 volts from the 9 volt battery that we have as input. And then there is the switch 1. This is used to turn on the power. As soon as you press the power button, switch 1, the MOSFETs will start conducting and the regulator gets its battery power of 9 volt and turns it into 5 volts. The minute you let go of the switch, normally the power would uh, go away because the current through the FETs will stop. But as you can see, there is a line coming from the microcontroller and by now the microcontroller has started up and will enable the switch line that takes over your manual switch to keep the power supply operational. And then by software, I can turn it off again. So turning it on manually, turning it off by software, which basically makes it an automatic power off function. Then the other block of the schematic is the microcontroller itself. We see an Arduino and we see a speaker connector with a simple uh, universal transistor, like this the case, the BC547, but you can use any NPN transistor. And this is used to basically give more power to the speaker. It's a simple speaker, it's a simple sound, but it'll do for this project. There is a connector P1 that I can use to connect some pixel LED strips that we can use to eliminate the board at the back to give it more a magic look. And then of course we have the SD controller. Again, if you're using a breadboard with a SD card module, this part doesn't apply. But if not, then you can see there is a level shifter that makes the level from 5 volt to 3 volt for the SD card. So we can operate it without blowing up our SD card. And that's all there is to it. So let's build it. So you can either buy this module pre-assembled with all the parts on it already except the two hole components. So you just need to add some connectors and uh, socket headers. Or you can uh, use the Gerbers to uh, order your own PCB at your preferred manufacturer and then you assemble it by hand. I, of course, I include all the part lists. There are not that many parts. Let us take a look. So this is the PCB, and as you can see, there is the power management, and of course, we have our level shifter, and here is the big header, or going to be the header for the Nano, the Arduino Nano, if you want to use a header. If not, that's perfectly fine, it's up to you. There's the card reader on board, and at the back, there's basically nothing. So that's good, we only need to assemble one side. But since I already have a pre-assembled version with all the SMD components included, I'm just going to add the sockets, and I'm going to add the microcontroller. That will go perfectly there. And of course, I need to soldier it. We have some spare headers we're not going to use. Then I already cut up some sockets here. This one I cut up into uh, little pieces that I'm going to use later. And of course, for that we need to include some headers. And we need 3-pin, a 4-pin, and a 2-pin, like so. And we're going to put them in place and there, and of course there, and there. And we need to mount the transistor, like so. And then all we need to do is put this in place and start soldiering. And basically the PCB looks like this, assembled. Of course we have the SD card, the nano controller, the transistor right there, the headers, and then we're ready to start wiring it up. First let me show you what we're going to do. We have a board and the button is already uh, installed. I drill a hole, it's very easy to drill a hole in clay. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to put this one here. Of course we're going to place the battery. Of course, we're going to put a speaker and I will include some LED strips to illuminate the back when it's hanging on the wall so we have a nice glow at the back of the wall, which gives it another magic look. Yeah. First, I'm going to put on the headers that I prepared and basically we're ready to start wiring. I already prepared some wires. There's a battery clip. So we have a connector for the battery it goes to CM2. CM4 is going to be speaker so we can already wire that up like so and then of course we need to do the switch to make it complete uh, we need to attach some LEDs and I still have a LED, uh, a LED strip with some wire attached that I used for a previous uh, project so basically what I did I have some wires attached like so this one 
It's for the switch. This one is the battery. This one goes to the speaker and this one goes to the LED strip. And basically, this is all the wiring. What we need to do now is uh, give this a permanent place by using some uh, double-sided adhesive tape. And of course, we need to program it because the software that's in here right now is nice for testing, but it's from a different project. So let's see what it does. It plays sound. So that's something. So what you need to do is reprogram it to every time I press a button, it should uh, play a random sound for one of the four uh, ones. And of course, this one has to do a, a special function that I still have to think about. So let's move on to the software. Do you like free stuff? You can join the road test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our road test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the software. Well, the Arduino sketch uses one file. It's called Magic One Board. And the code is straightforward. Of course, we have a header that gives me some uh, project information. We have some libraries because I'm including an SD card and a way to play sound files. And of course, we have the easy button so we can use the button. And we have a NeoPixel library. Other than that, it's not that special on libraries. So what we do is we define a button. We define our SD card lines. Uh, we define the LED strip. The number of LEDs you can change to whatever you need. And of course, we have a speaker. I set the default volume to 5 because lower than 5 is, might not be loud enough. And uh, when I increase it to like 7, the disturbance on the speaker is too much. It deforms the sound because it's a very simple library using PWM. Then we have the setup in Sketch where basically initializes some lines, the SD card, and of course the pixels for the pixel add. And it initializes and starts the button readout. And that's all there is to it. And then we go to the main loop. And basically the main loop does five things. First, step one is start the rainbow lights. Step two is generate a random number from one to four. And then start playing a file uh, one to four, depending on the random number. And after playing, then show another rainbow colors on the LED strip. And after that, finally, go to sleep. So that's what we do. First, we set a rainbow show. We uh, generate a random number and play the sound file and after a while go back to sleep. And that's all it does. And then of course we have the rainbow function itself, which can be used to create a rainbow on a that strip. And that's basically all there is. It's very simple. To program it, make sure first you have the right nano board selected. I have the Arduino Nano and I am using the old type bootloader. It depends on the board you have, of course. Set the port uh, right to the one you need the one you're using and press program. So here's the plan. Next time one of your colleagues walks into your office asking you for more budget or more time or I run out of ideas, I don't know what to do. This is what you should do. Show them the magic wand board, ask them to press a button and maybe the luck will change. The light will turn on and it will start talking. Ooh. What magic can we do today? You need more money? Or did you run out of time? Or are you in the mood for a strike of luck? Is it manpower? It is, isn't it? You don't have enough hands to get all the nifty work done, eh? Well, go on then. Pick a wand and do what you think you should do with a wand. You know, move it around and say please. Of course, you can change the sounds, please. There's also one for budget. There's one for manpower, one for luck, and one for time. And honestly, it's a random fact. So press the button and find out which one of the four will you hand out by doing some magic. Who knows? Ooh. You might have a strike of luck. So this is all I have for you today. I hope, like me, you're ready to do some magic in the office. Let us know uh, what fun stuff you're going to do with it. If you have any questions, please ask them at the Element 14 community. Element 14 Presents has a nice community that you can visit to get more information on the project. This one, and of course the other projects. Now, with this nice magic wands and a nice magic wand board, maybe it's time for more magic. How about a hat? A magic hat? Who knows? Maybe next time.
Until then, see you later.